So you guys lost the plane. Hey man, you're detained. I'm detained? For asking where a plane went, I'm being detained? I just got detained at the crash site of a hundred million dollar F-35 jet that a US Marine pilot ejected himself out of and lost for over 24 hours. But did this pilot survive? And what happened to this plane? Before I figure this out, I flew to the mountains of Colorado where, in 1948, a B-17 crashed, the pilot somehow survived, and the plane is still there. I began my hike up this mountain to find this plane and see how much damage it took. We just drove 40 minutes into the middle of the Colorado forest. I'm already seeing poop on the ground, which means someone's been here or something. And five minutes into my trek, I saw this. Look at this. Holy sh Something ate the cow. Also, I'm seeing a variety of footprints on this path. We are not the only ones out here. Look, look at that sh Two front feet. Look at, the, look at the shape too. Looks like bear sh to me. Debris of a plane could be a pretty nice place for a bear to hide. Probably a good mile to go. I'm keeping my eyes peeled for anything that can kill me. Like we're seeing it. There it is. There it is. And look at that. We have made it. This engine's just straight up wedged in between these two trees right here. Pretty insane. Torn in pieces out here. Look at all this. I don't know how all passengers survived, I'll be honest. This thing is in absolute shreds. It must have crashed and just scattered across the floor. The guts of this plane are just scattered throughout this hill right here. There's so much to look at. As much as we want to trust planes, believe in their safety. It's a giant aluminum can. Sadly, not everyone is as lucky as these passengers. I drove a few hours to another part of the Rocky Mountains, where in 1970, a plane carrying the Wichita State football team crash landed due to mistakes made by the pilot and killed most of the people on board. Was this a case of terrible piloting or was there something unique to the Rocky Mountains causing these planes to crash? Only nine people survived, killing 31 people ultimately. We're 11.5 thousand feet up. This is almost two thirds of how high I was up at Mount Everest base camp. This is no joke of an elevation. This thing goes straight up. Going through that. The whole reason this plane crash even happened is because two irresponsible pilots, unfortunately, chose the more scenic path and were not properly prepared as they should have been to get over these mountains. The plane had too much baggage on it. It was too heavy and pilots didn't know what they were doing. And out of nowhere, I heard a strange noise. Whoa. Hello? How you doing? Are you out here looking for the... Yeah, I want to look for the plane. Yeah, I just think it's kind of sad. The guy just didn't plan his flight. He didn't, um, you know, check the altitude. He didn't check his rate of climb at the weight where yeah. he was. He just he just mucked it up really bad. Uh, but anyway. Well, this is pretty mysterious. I just met you up here. You're like a mysterious wizard I met out here, I feel like. <laughs> didn't expect this encounter. Yeah, you were subtle and stealthy, stealthy too. But anyway, so there there is stuff there. They come and leave flowers. There for a lot of people, there wasn't much to bring home the berry. I see. And so for them, it's the gravesite. Pilot just uh, did something. Y'all think they box that pilot every day in heaven or hell? You're stupid and he brought everybody else with him. Are there black bears out here? Uh, yeah, they're definitely black bears. Any encounters with a black bear? Uh, real close, like within a few feet. Actually? Yeah, I, I scared one out from underneath a tree. A baby or a big boy? Uh, it was probably about 300 pounds. Oh, he scared the shit out of me. Just follow that one and uh, the trees will open up down below you and there it is, kind of sad. Do you have any last words of wisdom? You seem pretty wise, I feel Enjoy like. Enjoy your day. Enjoy today. Okay. Who knows about tomorrow? Tyler, good to meet you. After this old man pointed me in the right direction, I never saw him again. I found the Rock Karen, the Wichita State University mascot, which means we need to go that way and around and we will find the plane. I believe I see it in the distance right here. That cannot be missed. Dang, this is brutal. Look at that. Oh man, Wichita State Memorial right there. Mallory Kimmel, 1949 to 1970. This plane is equally as destroyed as the previous plane, but the tragic difference is 31 people died. A son, brother, husband, father, grandfather, friend, and so much more. Rip, Coleman, Ray, Max. This is not a forgiving angle either. The first responders were construction workers who heard an explosion and rushed to the scene. And this is what they saw. Basically 29 of your peers die on site 
two of them are dying in real time, nine of you survive. While this was a tragic example of pilot incompetence, not all pilots suck. In fact, I hopped in a plane myself and met up with a survivor on board the infamous Flight 1549, where the pilot miraculously landed the plane in the Hudson River. Ain't that Denzel Washington movie? I even made a movie about it. I met up with... Who the fuck is this? Didn't Denzel land the plane in the motherfucker? Tom Hanks the goat. But the survivor to hear her story 14 years after the plane crash. Denise, when you hopped on that plane and you heard Captain Sully say, brace for impact, was it? What was going through your head? Well, at that time, we were about 90 seconds into the flight. I was in the front of the plane, so I heard everything going on in the cockpit. And what I heard was terrain, terrain, pull up, pull up. I thought I was gonna never make it survivable because I thought it was a 9-11 attack. You could tell there was something wrong. There were there was this huge clamor, an incredible noise, smoke in the cabin, and the plane was not moving. It was like it was standing still. And I could tell we were over the Hudson River, but I couldn't understand why. How long until captain and flight attendants indicate there's something wrong at play? Well, it seemed like a day and a half, okay. but the reality was about 90 seconds. Did you think you were going to die at that moment? Absolutely. So no one at this time knows a Canadian goose went into the engine? No. no Nobody knew. He said, this is your captain, brace for impact. I knew how to brace, and I did, but I kept popping my head up to look, to watch my seatmate, to watch the other passengers, and they were all doing the same thing. We were all basically watching one another's reactions. That's how you know. That flight to LA when we was in the thunderstorm and I thought niggas was finna die. I'm telling you, I was looking at, I was looking straight at my, the other passengers. See, if they shitting bricks as much as I'm shitting bricks, then we, we, we tripping. But niggas was just chilling, listening to music. I was like, all right, maybe I'm tweaking. I'm like, maybe I'm tweaking. Maybe I'm tweaking. As to how we were going to survive, I knew that I could swim. I just didn't realize how far, how fast, how long I could last. I knew that I couldn't last very long with hypothermia. And then splash of water hits your window or your windows rolled down? Oh, absolutely. All the shades were open. So did water cascade above the window? It, it was the most incredible touchdown, if you will. It was so hard and smooth at the same time, but it was forceful and it was a vengeance and all the water came up over the front of the aircraft. And it was like, oh my God, we're gonna, the plane's gonna explode. We're gonna flip, something's gonna happen. What happens next? Do the flight attendants usher you out? The flight attendants, the normal call, evacuate, evacuate, go front, go front, because the back was broken. My seatmate looked at me, goes, we've gotta go. And I said, why? Water is coming in from the back, and I said, aren't we dead? And he goes, no, we're not dead, and I'm no angel. And he kind of, <laughs> and nigga was like, bitch, get up! escorted me out. Our slide raft was, did not deploy properly. It deployed upside down, so we went right into the water. How ravenous were people to get out of the plane at first? Jumping over their seats ravenous. Got it. So <laughs> when I... I believe it. Nigga, watch out, bitch, move! Hell oh, yeah, nigga, what? This bitch gonna blow! What? Got to the raft and then people were just sliding down one after another and they'd come right into you. I can't, my hands are clenched, my feet are like ice bricks. I'm completely, completely frozen to death. My hair is ice. Well, the helicopters were coming in. My raft was the last raft that was rescued. And at this time you have hypothermia, right? Oh, absolutely. Ultimately, everyone gets out of this plane alive? Everyone survived. How has it affected you? Your mind is 100% focused on the plane crash. Every minute of every day, of every week, for months, Every time I got into the shower, I had flashbacks. I flew right away. I didn't let that hold me back. I said, I'm going to get back on the horse. But it was very, very stressful. If they had not been our pilots, we would have died. While Denise was lucky enough to have Sully as her pilot that day, it seems like a lot of these pilots don't know what they're doing. And as we packed up the cameras and prepared to head home, I saw this on Twitter. The Marine.
Ross had lost a hundred million dollar F-35 and were on Twitter asking for the public to help find it. Within 24 hours, a crash site was identified 80 miles north of Charleston, South Carolina. I hopped on the soonest flight and drove to, Nigga. to the nearest town to talk to anyone who may have seen it crash. How could the government lose a plane? Coppers left and right. The whole story is fishy and it just doesn't make sense. I went in disguised as a southern boy to find out. Hey y'all, question for you. You know about the F-35? Well, I know it went down. It was over towards Florence. Okay. That's the most we know so far. So you've seen it on Muddy Creek? Yeah, it was real old. It was Sunday night. I haven't, I haven't seen it. I drove like by there. They had the tents up and used it, but I did hear the boom on them. Um... You heard the boom? I heard the boom. How loud was it? It was loud. Oh, boy, I was like, man, that's about to go into a mercy landing or something. Then hit the ground and shook the whole house. But there was no explosion, no fire. Like, I didn't see it. Okay, y'all know where the missing F-35 went? Missing? You know? It's at Bartell's Crossroads, is all I can Oh. Bartels Crossroads? Well, I didn't go down there, but I know where it's at. Okay. To that stop sign, you're at Bartels Crossroads, and you'll see the law in everywhere. I don't know if the physical plane's there, debris's there, or what, but Bartels Crossroads. Do you believe the military lost it? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, they got stupid. <laughs> they got stupid. Shit. Some of it. Do you think they'll shoot me on sight if I go too far? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Son of a bitch. Bartels Crossroad, eight minutes Son away. Son of a bitch. Here it is, right here. Look at this. Right 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 right. As I found what appeared to be a fully blocked off road where the locals said the plane was found, I saw this guy chilling in his car who looked like he knew something. You work for the news? Yes, sir. Good to meet you, sir. My name's Tyler. Tyler? We're looking for the F-35. Well, my name's Tyler, too. Well, I believe... Your name's Tyler? Yep. Son of a bitch. What are y'all? Are you also... Oh, I'm with O News. What is that? I never heard about that. Oh, brother. Quit it with the disrespect. I just... I, I just... Excuse me, y'all. We're looking for the missing F-35. I'm a concerned citizen looking for answers, and I'm hoping you can answer them. You don't got them. I don't want to cut you short. Who are you, sir? I'm with the sheriff office. Uh, mind if I introduce myself? That's fine. My name's... Fat ass nigga sitting down all the time. You catching as a sheriff. Tyler. Very good. What's your name, sir? Dudley. I don't mean to interrupt your operations or your well-being today. And I'd like to ask why these roads are blocked. Do you have an answer? I don't. I... Son of a bitch. I can't answer any questions. Are you, they don't want us to say anything. Why are they? Why are they hu putting a hush order on you? They put a gag order on you, Dudley? No, they didn't put a gag order. Why, why did you react like that, though? Oh, you asked me that. Did they put a gag? You reacted violently to that question as if they put a gag on it. I'm done. Where is the damn plane? Look at that. Could that fit a plane? Excuse me, sir. How are you driving through here? You're a Fed. Do you know where the uh, plane went? I need to talk to you. Yeah. Do you know where the plane went, sir? Hey, I'm making a delivery. Is this cargo? Tyler, what do you think? What are they hiding from us? I know about as much as these two up here. Excuse me! That's military right there. Excuse me, sir! Can I speak to you? We may not have been able to get through this route, but we will go around. Oh, I drove to the other side of the blocked road. Boy, oh boy. A Mustang waiting for us. How you doing? We're looking for a missing F-35. You know where I can find it? $100 million valuation? Don't have any clue. Do you know why you're here? No, sir. Really? No comment. No comment. Expected response? The question is, what are they hiding out here? Well, here comes the military, so you can ask them. Oh, thank God. There we go, we got three troopers right there. How y'all doing, gentlemen? Not bad, how are you? I'm doing good, I'm looking for the missing plane. And I've done nothing illegal. Looking for a missing plane? Yes, sir. Okay. What is your name? Uh, my name is Sergeant Lively with the Provost. Okay, we got one, two, three, four. And who do you guys represent? We represent Marine Corps. Okay, so you guys lost the plane. That is classified at this time. I can't answer any questions. So where'd the plane go? Well, that's not for me to disclose. So Drew, what is the intent of the three-man squad pulling up here? What are you protecting? We're protecting a... The sanctity of this empty field? Absolutely. Interesting. Did he feel threatened? Is that why you guys came over here? At the time, yes. You could... He felt threatened? I'm a pipsqueak. I'm easy pickings. Come on. I understand that, but I mean, looks can be deceiving, you know? Let me see that. Let me see that. Do that again. Look, that's, that's nothing, man. <laughs> See him? Which one? Pipsqueak or Pipsqueak? Ooh, calling names? Yes, sir. What are you calling names? You're talking smack about these guns. I'm not talking smack. I was saying you're a big guy. It was just a joke. You can't take one? I didn't say I was taking a joke. I'm complimenting you. <laughs> all right, all right. Jokes what aside. What are you chatting about, bro? No, let me see those tries. Come on. Let me see those tries. No, tries. Dude, you see that horse? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Who's this guy right here? That's my boss. Okay. Does he know where the plane went? Can't say. Hey, look. What's your name? 
My name's Tyler. All right, Tyler, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep you here. And I'm gonna have some guys come talk to you. For what? What is that? How is that even legal? Because you're in federal. What is this martial law? I'm not in any jurisdiction. The Marines can ask the public for help finding the plane, but if I ask where it is, I get detained. My arrest. We're just gonna hold you right here for right now. You're gonna hold me physically or spiritually or emotionally? I'm yeah, telling you that we're holding you for asking questions. Hey man, you're detained. I'm detained for asking where a plane went. I'm being detained. Technically, the military can't do that. If I can, just have you lift your shirt for me real quick. All right, now turn around for me. Keep turning, keep turning, keep turning. Keep turning. This is a humiliation ritual.